Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Let's Talk Special Economic Zones. I'm your host, Ainsley Brown, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about building knowledge-intensive industries, specifically using zones to build knowledge-intensive industries in small island developing states. Now, there is there are several small island developing states around the world. There's a massive cluster down in the Caribbean. Um, including countries like Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Bahamas, Jamaica, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, etc. Right? There is also another cluster, I guess, you know, within the uh, Pacific where you have, you know, Samoa, Fiji, um, who else is out there? Um, Vanuatu, um, and those islands um, on that side. And then, you know, in the Indian Ocean, you have um, Sri Lanka, which is a sizable island, but still a, considered a small island developing state, um, Mauritius, and those countries. Uh, Madagascar, which is quite big, but is a um, developing country nevertheless. Um, now, I want to focus particularly around the what what's called the orange economy, and that is around the creative industries, you know, art, culture, um, things like animation, movies. Um, also, it includes sports, um, and with sports, you have not just the actual performance, um, you know, whether it be team sports or, you know, such as rugby. Um, American football, soccer, et cetera, et cetera. There's also all that goes with that. The management side of things, they also the training and the coaching side of things. And um, small island developing states have developed local knowledge, um, traditional knowledge, which um, can be shared with the world. It's it's all about packaging it, um, put it in, you know, get in the intellectual property registered and and recognized you know you have things like geographic indicators um you know such as you have champ the most famous one being champagne can only come from the champagne region of france um etc um, these sorts of things uh can be used to um build out the economy or add both resilience and robustness to um uh economy and especially now after COVID-19, this has been brought into sharp focus. Uh, there are many, you know, physical limitations, of course, being small island developing countries, um, logistical issues in terms of connectivity, physical connectivity, moving goods, uh, whether by sea or by air, and the expense that that, that entails. So, uh, you know, being able to use your, your, um, your brain um, to earn money is of great import uh, for uh, small island developing um, countries, especially trying to diversify their economies, which are typically either agricultural base or strongly agricultural and or certain sort of commodities or even tourism or a combination thereof um, of those. And um, we've seen what has happened uh, in terms of that lack of diversification and the impact that that has had with a with thing like a, the pandemic, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And on top of that, then you have things such as the, the Russia-Ukraine war. Then on top of that, you also have the climate crisis, which has really, in 2022, you've really seen a lot of the effects worldwide in terms of just extreme weather all across the board, um, from heat um, to um, excessive rain and flooding and fires and a whole host of things, or in some areas, all, all of them, unfortunately. And the, the, the small island developing countries, unfortunately, are the canary and the coal mine. Um, we're at the forefront of the climate crisis. So finding ways to um, diversify our, um, the economies, finding ways to be more resilient, more robust is a must, and zones can uh, be part of that mix. It's not a panacea, it's not a silver bullet that, that solves all problems, but it can be used as a policy instrument by governments to, in small island developing states, to um, assist with that knowledge base. So for example, you could, um, you know, 
I live in Jamaica and Jamaica is known for its sprinting prowess and you know it's not an accident we we have a system built in place um from over many many years where literally you know sprinting is a pastime here where kids race each other on the road um for fun and also there's the the the, the boys and girls championships that is a high school if if you if you should look at it on the level of production and the level of training and um resources that you think it is at a higher level but it's actually high school kids and some of them are running world class times at at um very young ages um that's not by accident the the, the training capacity um that's in the, the island is um very strong uh, when it comes to sprinting that can be packaged and, and in some ways it is being packaged but it can be packaged put in a zone where these services these are services that are offered not just from you know people flying in to train but also it could be remote or a combination of the two that's that that's just one example i'm not saying that this is the only only way um in addition small island development states have stories to tell they have interesting stories, different stories. People want to hear about these stories. Um, and those can be filmed. Um, those can be put in animation, various ways to tell these stories and get them out um, to the wider world, um, including in print and books and, and so forth. There's different media that can be used to, to get those stories out. But the point is to be sending out while receiving back in, in terms of income um, within these within these countries. Uh, the, the traditional medicine uh, in terms of, um, you know, herbal remedies and so forth, these can be packaged in terms of nutraceuticals. It can go to a higher level in terms of pharmaceuticals, but again, when combined with things like geographic indicators to say, hey, this is specifically from this country and, you know, nobody else can imitate it, you can drive more um, income to that to that country and more production coming out of that country. But the whole point is it's less about the physical side of things and more about the mental. How do we package this and not so much the physical, doing the physical? Co the combination of the two is great, but... We need to focus on the, the 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 mental side of things, and the orange orange economy uh, opens up a whole host of opportunities in you know visual arts, animation, um, sports, as I said before, um, and zones can function as a way to um, create spaces, incentivize people to build spaces so that um, people can move in and offer these goods and services. Um, to uh to folks and and help to diversify um economies so if you like this episode please like share subscribe um if you want to see me do a specific episode on a topic that you find of interest just leave me a comment down below and i'll get right back to you